The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, 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 guys. My name is DJ Ola7 Owen. We're Kwamadonto here in South Africa. We are having a good time here in South Africa. And you know what, guys? The weather, the weather is just super nice, super cool, you know, and I'm having fun with the South African celebrities. And you know what, guys? Guess what? I'm sitting here with a very beautiful girl, young girl, energetic, vibrant. Her name is Gigi Lame. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gigi, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> no, I'm honored to be to be hosting you, you know, here in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm super happy. I remember when I heard that uh, the podcasting uh, uh, journey had started for you. I was super excited. Yes. Because I remember your energy and your exhilarance uh, when you interviewed me back in Zoom. Yeah, in Zoom, so, yeah. yeah, on radio. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, very true. And how is it? How is South Africa? Absolutely um, amazing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, entertainment was quite slow, but we're now picking up again. Mm -hmm. I'm a piano and other things. So I think a lot of us are in studio. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are creating content. Yeah. Uh, we're just pushing our culture forward. And I mean, yeah. it's been a great time for Africa, right? And we have I, I like the energy. I love the energy. You guys are just <laughs> giving us something new every time. Listen. Listen. There's something, there's a banger here, there's a banger here. Even in Zim, people are just vibing to your music, guys. Love it. I, I tell but you. But you know, we, technically we are we are hybrid some of us <laughs> so i mean i mean in both kingdoms exactly we, we try to represent both which is good I, yeah. I, I like i love that yeah and you know what you were born uh, uh genesis gabriella yes and uh tina mani right yes. exactly so how did the name uh, gigi lamaine yeah. come about uh g from genesis g from gabriella uh -huh. gg because I thought double G was boring. Oh, yeah. So GG. Um, and then LA from Gabriella. And my uh -huh. surname, Manny. Oh, yeah. Some people say money. Some people say money. Uh -huh. It's just what you like. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, so Gigi Lament. Oh, yeah. that was a creative name. Ah. <laughs> I don't want to be 50 cents. But I mean, like, 50 cents is worth millions, yeah, right? Exactly. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. <laughs> So before we go any further, you, you were born to a Zimbabwean mother, you know, yeah. and uh, you seem uh, very proud of your Zimbabwean roots. Yeah. And uh, can you tell us more about, uh, you know, th that aspect of yourself? Um, yeah, I'm very proud of that. I think for me, that's my party trick. That's my superpower. Yeah. Um, I think I learned... Uh, how to work super hard, mm -hmm. you know, from my mom and just how she was brought up. Uh, I think, uh, you know, just to put it out there, Zimbos are quite the mm -hmm. intellect, yeah. very smart, <laughs> love to learn new things yeah. and are super hardworking. Mm -hmm. So I think just from that culture of being brought up under her roof. Mm -hmm. And I mean, also, we've got like amazing food. Guys. Yeah. We've yeah. got amazing food. Mm -hmm. uh, meet a Zimbabwean and chances are they'll be your friend for life. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And that's very wonderful. You know, um, now let's rewind back to 2021 when yeah. you visited, uh, you know, Ngai. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about that, you know, experience and how it impacted you? Yeah. Did yeah. you see how that picture exploded? I yeah. was just like, what? Everyone's like, oh, it's Ngai. <laughs> exactly. She, she's Ngai. Exactly. So, so my, my paternal grandmother is actually, um, she lives in Guy. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm so grateful that she, you know, obviously we've got a, a you know, home in town. Uh, but I really love to go into the rural. Mm -hmm. So from Nkai to Whitewater, Emadobo, yes. mm -hmm. to, you know, I really love um, that experience because the level of quiet and the mm -hmm. level of nature yes. and learning is mm -hmm. something that you can never, ever buy. Oh, yeah. So I went there to visit my granny and mm -hmm. as usual, she put me into a hat yeah. with lots of smoke, wow. burning red eyes <laughs> and all the other girls are just like making their studs like exactly. their puppets. Exactly. Like it's nothing for yes. them. Yes. And for me, it's like, oh, this is a lot, <laughs> but you know, I need to get through this. Yes. So I go back once in a while to get that boot camp yes. fever yeah. from her uh -huh. and I absolutely adore her. She's a hard work working woman yeah. um i remember actually that visit mm -hmm. she was out 
busy with the cows mm-hmm. at like 4:30 a.m. AM. and oh. i mean this is a very old lady yes yes so, yes yeah the apple doesn't fall far from the tree i guess wow. with mom exactly it's hard working girls amazing amazing yeah. so you know moving on uh, to your early years you know uh could you share uh, with our listeners mm. just a glimpse into your childhood you know and yeah. upbringing yeah. yeah so i grew up um in johannesburg mm-hmm. south africa i frequented a lot of them yeah. obviously the public holidays mm-hmm. stuff like that uh but i went to a convent school here um went to vits university here mm-hmm. uh graduated and i guess the music kind of happened i always say by mistake because oh, it yeah. was like a, a contest uh at the university mm-hmm. yeah and then i decided to audition and yeah. then Made Kuli Chana and my life changed forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, there were many other key players throughout my childhood who were grooming me. Oh yeah. You know the likes of you know hip hop royalty Rashid K. Yes. The late Pro Kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and and many other people. Shaza actually. Yes. Shaza. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's proudly Zimbo. He's <laughs> yes, from H Town. Yeah. And um, yeah. Ever since I'd just been getting, I guess groomed for this position and mm-hmm. I didn't even mm-hmm. realize that I was going to become Gigi Lemay. So you being a Zimbabwean, you being in South Africa again, yeah. doesn't it cause like, uh, you know... Um, All the like, time. Yeah? All the Some time. problems. All the time. Yeah? All the time. Tell, tell me about that. problems with the Zimbos. It's always problems with the South Africans. Okay. So I'm one of those people who can be involved in both discussions. Exactly. And if you insult me, then like... You've exactly. Insul- <laughs> <laughs> you've insulted me. But yeah. um, it, it, it does ar- arise a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think there's really room for the hybrids. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised that a lot of young kids are not growing up where you know your dad is from Nigeria your mm-hmm. mom's from SA your mom's mm-hmm. from, your dad's from Zim your mom's from Mozambique yeah. and i think that also somewhat creates the perfect african oh yes um, i think we are symbols of unity even mm-hmm. though mm-hmm. we don't understand it yeah. you know yeah. mm-hmm. but then i can also speak in debele, debele i can as well. listen i can hear a bit of shona. shona and i think that is the african dream you know yeah. um really going beyond those boundaries and mm-hmm. those cultures to mm-hmm. be able to bring people together. I love that. So, yeah, sometimes, I mean, South Africans come for me. Yeah. And then there's the awkward, you know, Zimbo chat, like, are you from Zim? <laughs> you know, type thing. But then when they check online, yeah. I'm not. So, yes. so, I was born in South mm-hmm. Africa, but my mom is um, Zimbabwean. Zimbabwean yeah. oh, so, your dad is from South Africa? My dad is South African. My mom is Zimbabwean. Oh, yeah. great. So, in South Africa, where do you uh, come from? In SA, we come from the south of Joburg. Okay. So, my earliest memories were... Uh, well, initially, my parents lived in Cape Town. Okay. Then they moved to Lanasia, mm-hmm. Johannesburg South. Oh. So I spent a lot of time in and around Soweto. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then there was a point when I also moved to Yeovil, mm-hmm. Beria, yes. those areas. Yes. There was even a time I was in like Brakban Springs, Benoni. Yeah. Because um, my mom was a nursing sister. Oh. So you, you understand the job had yeah. been moving around yeah. quite a yeah. bit um, in, in the UK. Mm-hmm. But she's back now. And then... Yeah, I just became this Joburg girl because, yeah. you know, I had a feeling of Isoweto, <laughs> I had a feeling of Ayu, Yeovil, yes. and, uh, of course, the south of Johannesburg, Lanasia. That's very impressive. So, and before we get to, uh, yeah. into, you know, uh, deeper issues, mm-hmm. um, your musical achievements and all, I would love to hear about, you know, your poetic journey. Yeah. Um, your first published uh, poem, Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know, uh, sounds intriguing. Uh, that one. <laughs> what is I called you to 11. write that one? <laughs> I was 11. Yeah, I mean, 11. I, yeah. Wow, you were young, man. That's, that's, that always feels like a, a very strange time because I think it's solidified without it solidifying yeah. what I was going yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. But I initially thought I was probably going to get into writing, creative mm-hmm. writing or something like journalism thing yeah or, you know something in the media so mm-hmm. that's why at Vits, I, I went to study media oh. because i loved writing yeah, exactly and then the music thing happened mm. and then it was like good so you started music when you were doing uh, media po- media yeah. uh, but the poetry came way before okay so my primary school teacher noticed that i was writing for way beyond my yes, age. Your age, yes. Uh, started keeping me in at break time mm. to write. Wow. We entered, you yes. know, a few, um, I wouldn't say competitions, mm-hmm. but like a few trials. Yes. Then that's when, you know, uh, we got two poems published and mm-hmm. I, I was 11 at the um, African Poetry Institute of Africa. Yes. And I was the youngest writer there. Wow. So that's kind of where my journey with But what, what, what would you really say this one? Uh, this is where I got, uh, or I drew the, yeah. the inspiration. Valentine's Day? 
ah, Valentine's Day was just Valentine's Day. Like, what do people do? Uh, children getting chocolates from their boyfriends and girlfriends. Exactly, school. yeah. You know, mommy used to get like a cup with that teddy bear, the yes. black and red teddy bear, yes. white and red teddy bear. Uh-huh. So I think for me, it was just like all around love. And then the second poem, which is I think now where the the activist in me started was mm-hmm. called Mother of Us All. Oh, yeah. And I was talking about the earth and pollution. Mm. So I think that's where... You know, then it was weird because now we had like TV channels yeah. contacting my mother and yes. my teacher wanting yes. to interview me. Mm-hmm. And quite a few times they'd put me in a room with a piece of paper and they'd yes. give me like 30 minutes and say, write what you want to write about anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. But do you still remember the poem? Valentine's Day, I love so much. It's a day and lovers can keep in touch. Some people say Valentine's Day is bad and some don't like it because they're lonely and sad. Some like it because they can get chocolates from their lovers, but when the day comes, they just hide in their bed covers. That's all I remember because I was 11 years old. Wow. And one, two, three, that's tough as old. I don't know. Uh, really? yeah. <laughs> I was 11, guys. Yes. So obviously, I've improved with time. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you let a transition uh, from poetry to, to, to music. Yeah. You know, what led you, I mean, uh, to venture into music? I was doing piano lessons mm-hmm. with a very, very boring person. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember... My mother was a big fan of hip hop, listening to Salt and Pepper, yeah. Tupac Shakur, a mm-hmm. little bit of Tracy Chapman. But I mean, our home was very rich in music. Yeah, you can imagine, like mm. all these other worlds. My dad yes. uh, loved what he loved listening to. She loved what mm-hmm. she lo- loved listening to. Um, but th- there's just there was a weird connection with like Lauren Hill, yes. with the Salt and Pepper, mm-hmm. the Brads. I remember watching TV. And yes, there was a song. Who's that knocking on? Ndo, mm. Mr. and she had her braids and she and she looked so powerful and she was yes. with all these boys and she was rapping and she wasn't scared and yeah. she was in her element uh-huh. and I thought to myself I was like yo I think I want to be that girl one day one day yeah. <laughs> and that, there you those are. are my superheroes yeah. you know so the Brads, Lauren Hill mm-hmm. Foxy Brown MC yeah. Lights Lil Kim and obviously right now like Nicki Minaj they've set such high standards yes. for us yes. so for me definitely them mm, that's very 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 powerful so how did you transition from you know uh, 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 be writing poetry yeah. to becoming a rapper you know that's like it's very different very different yeah of course i don't know i think i think i just my mom i always knew that i didn't have a beyonce voice mm. <laughs> i didn't have a beyonce voice but i loved writing yes music uh-huh. so it, it was a matter of saying something and then putting it on like a, yes. you know and then yes Yes. And then everything, you know, went a different direction from oh, there. Yeah. So then now, you mm-hmm. know, my name is Gigi and I like to ball. My name is Gigi and you like to, wow. you know? Yes. And then I really started having fun with it. Mm. And I remember when we used to do war cries at school, mm-hmm. sometimes I would go along and create it and then other kids would like join in oh, you know, yes. during sports day. Yes. So yes. then that's when it was like, okay, like, this could be something interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So you went on um, on an exchange program in the UK under Richard Branson Scholarship Program mm-hmm. uh, at uh, Stowe School, right? Yes. And uh, in that, that's in Birmingham. Yeah. And finished as a runner up. Yeah. How did that program shape your music career? In every way. I think for one, um, I started loving learning about people who Mm -hmm. are very different from me. I got to meet people who are Bulgarian, people Mm -hmm. who are Russian, uh, you know, the British, the Chinese, uh, the Nigerians, the Mm -hmm. Ghanaians, the Ugandans, you know, and, and just having to open up to so many different people and Mm -hmm. teach them things and teaching me. I think the biggest thing was diligence. Yeah. You know, work Mm. hard and you will get your merits. Um, It might be a little more difficult because we don't all come from a place of privilege. I mean, being there, I was definitely not from a place Mm -hmm. of privilege. Mm -hmm. Buckingham was like a dream for me. Yeah. You know, what you guys see as Bridgerton now. Yeah. That was my school. Wow. You know, yeah. and um, this young girl coming from Janice, where I used to be in your full, I used to be in your <laughs> so And now I'm years. here in this all poise and, you know, like, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to really, really study how those environments work in the first place. Yeah. yeah. The diligence, the hard work, the resilience, um, the motivation mm-hmm. becomes something that's innate. Yeah. You don't. You don't look for it from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. It, it almost builds itself while yes, you're with people yes, there. So yes, true. things as simple as like just being on time for class mm-hmm. to 
what is going on here? What did the professor just say in physics? Exactly. Let me go research yes. for myself yes. and learn. I think for me, they definitely gave me a fighting spirit um, that I otherwise wouldn't have gotten if mm. I didn't go on the program. That's so profound. So were you born in a, in a musical family or, I mean, did you? Very, <laughs> yeah. I'm a daughter and I said, lucky to be Bob Marley. Yes. Like I said, Lauren Hill. Yes. Uh, UB40, mm -hmm. Randy Crawford, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. Listen, my parents are like, well rounded yeah like i really loved it for myself and my siblings <laughs> and what some people don't know is my oldest sister actually went on to a tv show mm -hmm. um well did she go on and was she rehearsing for it and didn't make it i don't know one of the two she'll correct mm -hmm. me when she sees mm -hmm. this but it was like a, a show a music show where yeah. people used to go they could either freestyle or sing and i think people know the show i'm oh, talking yes. about uh -huh. um twasa was also a presenter on it so she was auditioning. I don't know if she got there because I was really young. Mm -hmm. uh, my older brother was in the DJing world. Yes. Don't know what really happened there because I'm the one who came very late. Mm -hmm. Like we call it the lat lama. Yes. You know, like the la like there's so much of an age gap oh, between yes. you guys. Yes, yes. But everyone ended up assuming somewhat of a musical role at some point in time. My yeah. mom was in the choir. Mm -hmm. My dad was one of those people. Bless his soul. Um, my parents have split now, okay. but um, when they were still together. Mm -hmm. He was the one who used to sing around the fire mm. when he was super, super lit, you know? <laughs> uh, back in Zim, I remember yes. we used to sit around the fire and he'd exactly. sing all these songs. Exactly. And people would join in. So, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I could have taken more after him, actually, okay. in terms of his... So it's in the blood. It's yeah, no, it, it runs in the blood. Yeah. It's in mind. It's in mind. <laughs> exactly. So you released your first... Um, mixed up you know when you were 16 yeah and uh, your first album titled the color rain yeah you know and uh, when you were just 20 yeah ah, like i'm like yeah i so, like things yeah. yeah so how many albums do you have now and how has been the i mean the journey so far i think official albums i have one um but everything else was kind of like ep mixtape um, just playing around because I think album is just like such a different thing right mm -hmm. uh, and I think the only record label that can honestly be thankful or rather be excited about the fact that they were given the album title mm -hmm. was Mabala Noise okay so Genesis I Genesis was under Mabala Noise and that mm -hmm. was like that was an album oh. that, that is and shout out to Shaza as mm -hmm. well yeah that's something we had put together and um, Mabala distributed for us Mm -hmm. So I've had quite a few EPs and mixtapes, but when I say album, then you know it's like serious. Business. Oh yeah, yeah, it's serious, serious, <laughs> serious, yeah, business. serious yeah. business. Yeah. So in an interview you did with um, you know Drum yeah. uh, last year, you said, and I cut. I never imagined that uh, I, I, I never imagined I would achieve the level of success and recognition I have today. It's been an incredible journey filled with hard work, dedication, and a bit of uh, luck along the way. <laughs> I'm grateful for all the support from my fans and the opportunities that have come my way. Close cut. So when you when, when you reflect on your on your journey so far, mm. Gigi, uh, what are some you know standout moments uh, that you believe were pivotal in shaping your career? Definitely the role with Disney. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, I never thought that as a child watching a cartoon, you know, and, and trying to impersonate would ultimately, you know, have me land a yeah, role with yeah. Disney mm -hmm. and the Kids Asimoto, um series. I think for me, that was one of the biggest achievements of my life. Mm -hmm. um, working with the United Nations on yes. their Global Goals campaign was a very big one for me as well. Um, now I'm actually... Um, an MBA candidate. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my MBA with the University of Suffolk wow. under UNICAF. Wow, that's so big. So the United Nations definitely changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, and just like all the international work I yes, think, yes. you know, so young women to look out for in the world who are not just, you know, confined to music. Mm -hmm. We're in other spaces trying to create art. We're political. We're social activists. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, how could I forget the Fees Must Fall protest? Yes. Uh, yeah. Which had, you know, Fees Must Fall, which mm -hmm. was my song, uh, as one of the leading soundtracks of the movement. Wow. So, yeah, but I did, think... Did, me, did it then yield the results you expected? Absolutely. I think I can definitely <laughs> get into a room with a politician. And yes. Go, Hi, Gigi. How are you? Exactly. What are the youth complaining about today? <laughs> what are the youth complaining about today? Exactly. Um, and I currently have a song out, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, called Please Fix. Mm -hmm. And uh, it addresses uh, some of the, you know, the... 
the issues the youth have with government right yes. now around unemployment, around crime, and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So just being part of the UN, you know, with Disney, with mm -hmm. UNICAF, and all those experiences, I'd like to believe that I've somewhat instilled a level of confidence when it's come to the youth in oh, yes. engaging with, yes. you know, our our elders, mm -hmm. you know, in trying to fix True. problems. So yes. we're definitely not rebellious, mm -hmm. but um, they've definitely, through my story, allowed us to be opinionated wow. and. I, I definitely think they listen. Mm. Yeah. And uh, do you believe your artistic style, you know, has, um, has evolved since you started? Mm. And, I mean, what influences have played a, a role in, in that? Absolutely. I think, like we said, right, the... the the hybrid level. Yeah. I think once you've listened to so much music growing up, uh, you expose yourself to a whole lot of music and mm -hmm. a whole lot of communities. Like anyone who says to me, Gigi should have just done hip hop. Yes. Go read on my story. Mm -hmm. You know, just being in a school with children who are very diverse from yeah. me yeah. in the UK mm -hmm. to, you know, the Zimbabwean element to me to growing up uh, and you know, being in Soweto and being discovered by pro to, yes, yes. you know, there's no way I can be boxed mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy that I... I always look at like the song that you know we had with Kuli, mm -hmm. and then we have a song with King Munada. Yes. Then we have a song with Makazi. Yeah. <laughs> then we have a song with Ja Praiser. Exactly. And then we have, you know, it's like, oh yeah, and then there's Holy Ten as Holy well. Holy Ten as well, yeah, he's he's um, big now. And. <sighs> so you, you, AKA, you, you, Ricky you, you listen to Holy Ten. Holy Ten, oh. um, AKA Ricky Rick, and I think Holy Ten is. Uh, quite a, a bombshell hey uh -huh. like he's like <laughs> <laughs> he's a bombshell yeah um but yeah i got to work with him mm -hmm. uh, the energy was amazing yes and yeah. um yeah how, how has been the response so far from the you know the previous thing you did with the holy Den? it's been it's been good mm -hmm. it's been good i think it definitely did what it needed to do yeah. we have you know the south african audience wanting to learn more oh yes and yes. understand more mm -hmm. uh and it was just, it was easy. Yeah. It was easy to yeah. put together. That's, mm -hmm. I like that when an artist makes it easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in May 2019, Gigi, you were labeled the first female to put together, you know, and successfully execute a hip hop one woman show um, on the African continent. And uh, can you tell us more about that? Because, you know, the experience and the organizing you know, of that show. <laughs> that was so difficult. Yeah. We made such a loss. Mm hmm. Um, at least we didn't get into debt, mm -hmm. but it was something that I was doing for history and not for the money. Oh, uh, I think uh, a huge shout out to Nadia, to Muesli, the late Sim Shoza, mm -hmm. uh, and the boys who joined us on the lineup, yeah. Big Zulu, Kuli, Reason at the mm -hmm. time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody who is there to support. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was just literally just making sure that somebody had to do it in my yes, generation. Yes. So although it wasn't like sold out and although we didn't make um, money from it the way we wanted to, mm -hmm. um, I'm just really proud that we can walk away as a generation yes, with Nadia and yes. the girls and say, okay, we tried doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I'd really love for us to get into that space again where we support each other. You mm -hmm. know, next time, let it be Nadia. We come through and support her. Exactly. Let it be Muzli. Next time, we come through and support mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. But we need more movements around women becoming, yes. you know, center stage. Mm -hmm. You know, we're mm -hmm. always supporting our brothers. And we love that. And we thank them for putting us on. Yeah. Uh, but I think we need to become more daredevilish. Like, yeah. Let's just... Yeah, the boys are fearless about it. Let's also do it. You <laughs> exactly. know, even if it doesn't come yes. out the way you want it to yes. come out, just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So apart from you, um, which other artists, you know, female rappers are doing it here in South Africa? I definitely would say uh, Nadia. Mm -hmm. She's my big sister. Yeah. I found her in the industry and yes. she's such a, a, a glimmer of light. She's mm -hmm. such an amazing person. I would say Rouge as well. Mm -hmm. I really rate her lyricism, you know, very highly. She's yes. a beautiful human being. Mm -hmm. Uh, Muesli, of course, was one of the pioneers when we started off in the mainstream. Yeah. And we've got younger girls coming up now, the likes of Keiki. Mm -hmm. um, Anel Zondo, I absolutely adore. Oh, yeah. I love her. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like if I'm forgetting anyone, like just forgive me. Yeah. Indigo Stella. <laughs> no, with me, they take offense. If oh, I yeah. forget them, oh, so I need to make sure they, oh. Indigo Stella, <laughs> uh, D Koala, <laughs> and all my girls who are really like, Pushing super, super hard, getting yes. those deals. Yes. Um, but I think a huge shout out to the girls who started this, mm -hmm. you know, like Nadia, Rouge, myself, yes. Moodley. It wasn't an easy journey. Yeah, true. At all. And I love it when the younger girls can still come to us and say, you know what, 
thank you for doing you know what you've done i i talk like i say young like yeah. i'm old eh? uh, no, no, like, i'm in my late 20s like uh, i talk like uh, i feel like an old woman <laughs> <laughs> i feel like such an old woman ah yeah. uh, no but that's still fine you know yeah. in july 2021 you revealed that you had completed your journey uh, as a sangoma uh what I led you to correct that okay it's not sangoma guys. exactly i literally went to a prophecy school there are different people who go there so oh, yeah. whether you want to be umtandazi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a person who's in prayer okay. or a sangoma yeah. or ufunuba like yes. a traditional healer uh -huh. or there are different things you do there yeah. but naturally when you see somebody dressed in a certain way then yes. you alluded to that yeah. so for people it's literally a spiritual gift I was going to uh, nurture mm -hmm. uh, out of respect for what I was doing I obviously can't get into the nitty gritty yeah. but like it's I'm not a sangoma you're not a sangoma yeah people keep like and, and it's like it's it's you right. It's like yeah. it's articles online, mm. and it's just like I wish people would educate themselves yes. more about it. Mm. So, so what are you uh, between these? You know, there's you said sangoma, inyanga, yes. and uh, also um, I'm spiritually gifted. Tandazi. I can help you out. I can pray. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can assist, but I'm definitely not a sangoma. Oh. So I would just say I'm spiritually gifted. It comes yeah. from a lineage. Mm -hmm. um, from Zim, from my Zim. mom's lineage, oh, yeah. and uh, it's just a baton that I took up, you know, after facing uh, mm -hmm. somewhat uh, physical issues oh. uh, with with myself. Yes. So it's not, it's not, it's not Sangoma. Mm. And thank you for clarifying that. I yeah, think this is exactly. the first time I'm actually clarifying it. Oh, yeah. It's not Sangoma. So do you, do you like see things spiritually? Do you see things in the spirit? I mean, while it's a sleeping or I'm even... I'm going to let you know. Mm. I'm going to let you know. Yeah. If I see anything... <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's something that happened like three days ago yeah. where I saw something. Somebody <laughs> passed on uh -huh. and I was at a certain event mm -hmm. and there was a message I was supposed to gave to the person yes. and I gave it on stage not realizing that oh. I was giving it and then she came to me and she was like ha huh, actually yeah so it's, so yeah, it yeah, happens point. yeah so it happens and I think um probably when everything is said and done with Gigi mm. that's where things will be for me yeah. I don't want to make money out of something like that mm -hmm. I don't want to commercialize something like that mm -hmm. um, but for those around me who can benefit from it then I, I, I would be more than happy uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so in an interview you did with uh, the Chronicle you said in a cut uh, I help people through my music and I also offer consultations you know uh, on Instagram live I'm mm. feeling super blessed to have been chosen you yeah. know with this calling in such a big world where there is so much uh, turmoil and uh, destruction yeah and uh, but god puts you there to be a lie to young mm. people close court uh, that's what you say to the chronicle how do these you know uh, two aspects of your life yeah uh, complement and influence each other well in many ways i mm. do believe that the music brings in the income and the opportunities mm -hmm. uh, the consultations at the time i remember were absolutely free mm -hmm. so young kids would like kind of like call me older people would like call me and then we'd sit down you know yes. have a chat about it mm -hmm. and i'd see where where i'd assist and um after some time it does get like super tired yes uh because there's only so much you can do in terms mm -hmm. of trying to balance both and hence i'm saying there's probably going to be a time where i kind of have to choose figure out mm -hmm. i'm just not in a space now where i feel like i want to be able like i want to charge people yes i don't yeah. know i just i don't know if it's like giving church vibes yes. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it's like giving for free church vibes, yeah. but like i can't exactly. I, I don't i've never quite understood the premise of like people charging exuberant amounts of money mm. for people to receive exactly, help. exactly. if you want to it's, it's a different thing if you're saying like, oh no, mm -hmm. get yourself like a bottle of water yes, and pray yes. over it. Exactly. But for me, it's it's a different thing when you're like asking them to go and like mm -hmm. pay 60,000 rand yes. for a cleansing. Yes. I don't think that's how it's supposed mm. to be. Yeah. I, I get it. So you know what? You know, I want to understand from you, Gigi, what challenges have you faced in your career, you know? Yeah. And how have you um, uh, overcome them? Oh, I've faced everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at my, my career, it's short, but it's super long. Mm -hmm. um, I think just by one virtue of the fact that you're a young black female trying to do something mm -hmm. that's never been done before. Yes. Um, coming from such a diverse cultural pool, I can understand why I confuse people sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think once you meet me, then you kind of realize that I'm very different from what you think you're getting yeah you know and mm -hmm. it's for me i'm i'm creating arts mm -hmm. uh, i am arts 
And I think it's really just a lot of misconception around yes, who I am. Yes. Um, and I'd like to believe that once I'm in your life, I'm, I want to be for keeps. Yes. I'm a lover. I'm mm-hmm. a nurturer. Um, I check on people. Mm-hmm. But I'm also like very private in the sense that like you won't necessarily know who my friends are yeah. or my allies are in mm-hmm. the industry. But I've got some very, very good people beside yes. me and behind me. Wow, so, yeah. that's very powerful. Then moving on, uh, Gigi, I understand now you've done something with uh, Nox Kuni. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people in Zim, back home, they were saying, oh, maybe there's something between uh, uh, Gigi oh, yeah. and Nox romantically. So I was like, okay, let's get to find out from, from Gigi. Is there anything you between, or Listen, was there anything between you and I Nox? I think you guys need to ask Nox. <laughs> I, I think you guys need to like, ask Nox, but I do know that he's quite the ladies' man. Oh. So I don't want to get into trouble with anyone. Shots fired! Like, I don't want to get in trouble with anybody watching this. Yeah. And it's like, leave my man alone. Exactly. So I feel like you need to get him on the podcast of course and ask him himself yes and then he'll let you know and yeah. then whatever he says that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> Gigi, that sounds like an answer though whatever he says uh, that's what it is i, I want to hear what he's gonna say actually. okay what's your relationship like with him now we we are very close yeah yeah now hmm your vibe. He, he's such a sweetheart. Oh. Like, he's guys, so sweet. Guys, there you have it. Oh, wow. I never <laughs> confirmed anything. <laughs> no, but that's fine. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, at, uh, last year, uh, there were also allegations that uh, you were dating a fellow, you know, rapper. And, no, uh, I did not date Big Zulu. Hey. I never dated Big Zulu. Hey. That, that was a malicious rumor created. Oh. A very, very malicious rumor created. He's well, like a brother to me. Uh, he's like a brother. Yeah. I mean, we've taken pictures together. Yeah. And I always find him to be such good company. Yes. So, no, we did. Mm-hmm. I, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Big student, I could, no, no, no. It could never. Because, because the issues and indications are that, uh, you know, you had, you had a fallout with your manager, you know, Bully. Yeah. Uh, who happens to be, you know, Big Zulu's baby, baby mama. mama. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, she's such a good person. Um, I just think. Uh, we grow out of situations. Yes. I think we grow out of situations. Uh-huh. We learn different things. We want to take our careers and ourselves in different directions. Yes. Um, but it's so unfortunate that, you know, there were, there were probably other people who were trying to kind of feed off the yes. situation. Yes. But she's amazing. Mm-hmm. She's in PR. You know, she did what she did yes. for my career. And okay. I absolutely love and respect the black queen that she is. Wow. Um, and I think she knows that. I like know? that. And same with Uzulu. Uzulu is yes. like my brother. Uh, yeah. you know? So um, keep the rumors coming. They keep me relevant. <laughs> I love them, it. Keep them coming. Keep yeah, them coming. Yeah, I need a new rumor now. Like, can somebody <laughs> say I am dating like a, I don't know. Just, <laughs> let's choose a new person. Exactly. Just say yes. Like Tyler, I see you. Can, exactly. I, can I date somebody else now? <laughs> let's start a new rumor, guys. <laughs> oh, we'll create one. We'll create one. <laughs> yeah, please. Let's create one. So in 2022, you posted on your Twitter, Gigi. You yeah. said, and I caught, you said, you are all about to meet my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, and what exactly did you mean by this? You got all the truth, no. my word. Um, <laughs> there was a point where I was questioning my sexuality when exactly. it came to her. Yeah. Yeah, she was quite. Yeah, she's. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Miss D is. She's hot. She's hot. Yeah, she's hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. It's just that like, I want babies. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't going to... But she's just like so hot. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think she's hot still. <laughs> she had me questioning my sexuality. But were you coming out uh, of the closet, you know, uh, to confirm your sexuality? I'm, I'm, I'm very straight, but I'm bi-curious. Mm-hmm. I love beautiful women. Yeah. Um, I love being around beautiful women. Mm-hmm. I love telling women they're beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, I just... I love women. Um, I, I wouldn't... I'm straight. I mm-hmm. love men. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I'd like to marry a man, but I think... When I see a pretty girl, she mm-hmm. she needs to know. What, what do you feel when you, when, you, when, you, when you see a beautiful girl? I want her to be next to me. Because uh-huh. I think now it's two pretty girls. Wow. Yeah, I want her to be next to me. I want her to be around me. Yes. I want her to be happy. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that really makes me like lesbian. <laughs> I, think, I think I just like pretty women. Like, yeah. Hmm. No, I, but, I, I, but I understand. But people will be like, okay. Uh, but didn't it cause some, some trouble? Oh yeah, Somehow. because we're, like, cause we were like kissing. Mm-hmm. Like, what happened? Like, we were kissing, right? That video, like, yeah. yeah but like, I kissed my mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I kissed my nieces. Yeah, I, I, I girls kiss. Yeah, but, but but now you were kissing someone who is not your mom, who is not your sister. I kiss my friends too. Yeah, yeah, this is my friend. Is it just just like a normal kiss, or you know, you? It was a far? normal kiss. No, it wasn't. Like, 
I, I actually need to go check. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but I think it was like just the normal kiss. Exactly. It wasn't that like... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, uh, guys. You really went and checked. Exactly. Eh? Yeah. But guys, you know what? Gigi, she's, she's such a, a vibe. I'm, I'm, I'm like, Gigi, I, I think I can spend days with you. Hopefully. Ah. Yeah, we need to we need you know, to come back and catch up again. Exactly. Well, the yeah. vibe, you know, is just something. Yeah. But uh, can you speak about uh, any personal experience or, you know, mm. encounters that... Um, have shaped your understanding of the LB, uh, LGBTQ, you know, uh, plus community? Um, I would like to say a huge thank you to the Pride community. I think um, they've assisted quite a bit. I don't even want to say they, yes. because I feel like I'm part of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, my fellow, you know, members have, like, really assisted in a lot of my wars, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, online and offline, mm -hmm. you know. I always feel protected. I feel loved. Yes. I don't feel judged. Yes. And just because I'm a straight girl... Mm -hmm. Or like I appreciate women, yes. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like I've never been made to feel like I am not part of the community. Wow. So for me, I just like want to say, you know, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that is a relentless movement and it's, you know, it's here to stay. Yeah. Uh, and to people who feel some other way, like mm -hmm. nobody's hurting you. Yeah. Why are you hurt? Exactly. Nobody's hurting you. Mm, yeah. I understand. In 2022, you launched your podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that move. You know, I'm like, oh, wow, that's my yeah. girl. Yeah. So it's called, um, you know, Point of View with Gigi. Uh, what really motivated you to, I mean, to start uh, that podcast? And what has been the journey? How, how yeah. has been the journey, by the way? Because I'm controversial. Mm. I think people tune in because they, they're trying, like, people were trying to figure me out. Yeah. And in as much as I would have guessed, I think it was also kind of like, people fishing to figure out what kind of person yes, I am. Yes, yes. Um, so ever since that's happened, I think it's kind of giving a clearer perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't mind the controversy. Mm -hmm. I don't mind what it, what it comes with. But I also just felt that there were so many people in the industry who mm -hmm. had things to say and they were never given the platform because mm. you find that there's somebody else who has an agenda. Yes, yes. And they're not as capable of acquiring a platform to be yes, able to tell their yes, side of the true, story. True. So point of view was that. Mm. Like, let me give you a platform for you to ever clear up anything, for you yes. to talk about anything. Yeah. Even for to, you to rant as well. Yes, to rant, yeah, inform, yeah, entertain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's basically what it's done. And wow. it's, it's grown into so many different branches mm -hmm. because now it's not just me. Yeah. We have Coco Palisa who's also on it now. We have Zah, we have Black Slim. Or oh, the same podcast. Mbaliwama 2K. Yes, yes. wow. So we've wow. got just emerging brands in the mm -hmm. podcasting space. Like, you know, on the back of POV. I like so, that. So, yeah, I'm excited about that movie. Well done, Gigi, you know. You. And you launched, the, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you know. You launched the beauty and uh, wellness launch. Love that. Uh, IV. Zeal. Zeal. Oh. <laughs> in Santin. Yeah, that's in Santin. Yeah. So, what inspired you to, you to venture into the beauty and wellness industry and open yeah. this establishment? Because I like things. Mm -hmm. I like nice things. I like good skin and I was struggling with good skin. Wow. Um, I was struggling with maintaining my weight. Mm -hmm. I was struggling with the fatigue of being on the road when I'm gigging, traveling. Yes. And that was my solution. Mm -hmm. So I went, I walked into this uh, store, my stepdad, an amazing man. Yes. He introduced me to it and he was like, listen, this is like, you get energy from these trips. And yes. And, and, yes. and uh, at that time, I was just looking for a new venture mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, yeah. why don't we yeah. try and get into this? <laughs> and my mom is a nursing sister by profession. Uh -huh. So it was an easy thing to put together. So we went, got the franchiser mm -hmm. on board, and uh, we decided to open our own store in Zanzibar. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, you've always told people that uh, you are not just a rapper, but also a brand, you know, and this has been proven by your entrepreneurs inside. Um, like, can you take us through your mm. partnership with, um, uh, you know, the ladies, footwear, brand, mm. rock, mm. and co? Yes. Yeah, for the Gigi Lamin collection and yes. other projects uh, that, yeah. um, that you're working on. I, I love money. I love I love making money. Uh, I love the art of... I don't really like spending it, but I, I love making money. I like acquiring assets. I mm -hmm. like seeing it come in more than uh, I'm used to. I didn't come from a privileged home. Mm -hmm. So it excites me when I'm able to make 10 rand out of 5 rand. Mm -hmm. It excites me when I know that I'm changing the lives of the people yes, around me. Yes, yes. Uh, and that I'm feeding families mm -hmm. uh and i hope i continue in that way yeah so with business for me i feel like it's a 
new video game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. IV Zeal is a new video game for me. Yeah. The footwear company is a new video game for me. Mm. And sometimes you'll take wins, sometimes you'll take losses. Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about elevating yourself. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's not just financially. Yeah. Sometimes it's in terms of your knowledge, mm-hmm. in terms of your portfolio. Wow. And... Yeah, like I said, I like making money. I just don't like spending it. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't like spending it. Yeah, so like you'll be it, just right. saving it, saving it, saving it. it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not rich. You yeah. Know? So whatever I get, I try to like do other things. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that. So I understand. Yeah, we understand you, you, you were set to collaborate, uh, to do a collaboration with uh, Kiki Badders. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, how did it go? Ah, love it. I know the video is coming out super soon. Yes. Uh, we just have had some delays. Yes. But I'm really excited. I think Kiki is probably one of the most talented hip-hop artists mm-hmm. to come out of the Southern Hemisphere. I think yes. she's super talented. Mm-hmm. She's got such a good heart. She's beautiful. You can say that again. Amazing <laughs> body. Uh, and I love how hard she is. Exactly. You know, she's, like, <laughs> she's not scared of nobody. Yes, yes, you know? true. So a huge shout out to her. She could have chosen anybody to mm-hmm. collaborate with. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that I was one of the people she's done that with. Mm-hmm. I think she's also got very good business uh, etiquette. Yes. And she works super hard. Mm. She works super hard. And I just wish her all the best. Big shout out to you, Kiki. I know you're watching this. I know you love this podcast. And look, Gigi just gave you some flowers. You know, your flowers. <laughs> so who else do you wish to, to, to work with in Zimbabwe? Can a Winky D come my way? Oh, Winky! Like, can a Winky D come my way? I really, really would love to work with him. Uh-huh. Uh, my makeup artist was telling me about him. Yes. She talks about him almost all the time. Yes. Um, family absolutely love him. Yes. So, I, I, like, if he's watching this or if anyone can... Like, can you guys please tag Winky D? Uh-huh. Uh, I absolutely love what he stands for his humility how he takes everything with so much grace yes uh, I think there's a lot we could learn from him from as him, a yeah. brand True. and as a human True. being yeah. the messages he puts out mm. um, so definitely Winky D like wow. that, that is it like if, if Winky D like, uh-huh. like then I'm done like that's it for me Dara Winky this is an opportunity for you Gigi Arda collab Dara let's make it work let's do this man I know you're watching this let's do this and uh, I mean who do you think is the best artist in Zimbabwe Winky in any genre Winky D Winky D Winky D is amazing do I sound like a groupie right now no 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 it's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine Winky D yeah Winky D uh-huh. okay mm. uh, do you think hip hop in Africa is, uh, is taken serious in Africa I think hip-hop has taken a new form, believe it or not. Uh, I think all the rappers we're finding on Ama Piano mm-hmm. could be somewhat um, classified as, you know, a dance hip-hop mm-hmm. genre. Mm-hmm. Like a dance hip-hop genre. Yes. Because if you lower the volume on um, a music video, you know, those people look hip-hop. Yes. Uh, some of those people actually did hip-hop yes. before Ama Piano. Uh-huh. So as much as it's Ama Piano, I feel like there could be an argument yes. that, yes. you know, this is like dance hip-hop yes you know or mm-hmm. ama piano hip-hop or yes. ama hip-hop i don't know how we could put it together mm-hmm. but um i just think hip-hop has now evolved into something that it should have been mm. uh, we are a dancing people yes we are a lock drum people mm-hmm. we love our percussion yes we love to sing here and there but we're also really good with the raps mm. and we shouldn't let anyone take that away from us yes. historically yes we were in mm-hmm. you know before certain words like rap yes. became what they are yes so let's not let people take that away from us mm-hmm. um so does hip-hop have a space you know is it taken seriously maybe when it's n- when, it, when it's packaged as Western, I think that's the problem oh, where yeah. we are. Mm-hmm. But if we begin to localize it more, yes. then it's a different conversation. I like that. Yeah. How do we localize it? The sound, the drums, mm-hmm. the languages, mm-hmm. um, the dancing. Yeah. You know, uh, how we put it out to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Consult eyes to an Eskimo. And I think a lot of us creatives in Africa have been guilty of that because yeah. we didn't know better. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. now that we're realizing that how we look mm. is a vibe, oh, yes. how we dress is a vibe, yes. how we sound is a vibe. The vibe, yeah. You know, uh, and a big shout out to Tyler. Yeah. A big shout out to, you know, Black Coffee. Mm-hmm. People who like are so about being yeah, exactly. Africans. Africans, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think this is a moment where we really need to claim who we are and yes. understand that 
we are the new kid like we the new cool kids on the block on the block right? yeah true. we're the new mm, cool kids mm, mm, yeah but you know that's the very big problem we have in here in africa mm. whereby people think that uh, for you to be a good hip hop artist you have to sing in english mm-hmm. only mm, forgetting true. our own languages that's true you know I, but i think you've said it mm. right yeah on the 15th of august gg i understand uh, that's 2023 mm. you lost your love um liba dimfia you know uh, my condolences you know Thank and uh, who was also a rapper and a producer yeah. i'm very sorry about that uh, can you take us through you know uh, how you managed to handle such a tragic loss i'm handling it every day mm-hmm. yeah it's just um i prefer to heal in in, in private when it comes to that one. Mm. um yeah it, it just happened you know? yeah so i mean i prefer to heal in 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 silence i miss mm-hmm. him a lot mm-hmm. he's my best friend i cut off everyone <laughs> yeah yeah now i have to go back and talk to him again <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> cuz i was so happy i didn't care yeah. you know what um i i believe in in existing outside of our ourselves yeah i believe he's here with us right now mm-hmm. um and i i love him forever mm-hmm. you know and yeah i just I want to heal in private when it comes to that how one. did you manage to to come back strong you know uh, from that uh, development I'm just breathing. Mm. <laughs> I just wake up and breathe every day. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow, I understand. Mental health has been, you know, mm. a topic, you know, that you have been open about particularly when it comes to depression. Mm. You know, can you shed more light on the challenges you faced in dealing with depression personally and professionally? Yeah. Um I'm so glad that people are like taking depression seriously now. Yeah. I think there's a time where we thought it wasn't like a black man's you know disease mm-hmm. and you know african people don't get depressed yes. we can't afford to get depressed because I, i'm glad when we start to talk about it more because i think there's so much more healing mm-hmm. around it mm-hmm. uh, i think people are deliberately going out now to mm-hmm. uh, learn more about it yeah educate themselves and find ways of dealing with it mm-hmm. uh, more especially in the entertainment industry we've had people losing their lives because of depression true and uh, not being able to deal with it and it's such a scary thing when you hear people in your industry saying to you like i can't believe you're still alive like mm-hmm. you go through mm-hmm. so much i can't believe you're still alive uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a very strange thing to say yeah um but it is true every day is a struggle and it's not just for people in entertainment there's so many young people who are going through a lot mm-hmm. and uh, i just wish we would actually be nice yeah we would actually yeah. be nicer true. we would actually support one another mm-hmm. um speak more to each other yes. we live in a in a world where everything is clickbait mm, and everything is about mm, mm. you know who can get the most numbers and exactly. you have no idea how mm. i would never want to be responsible for destroying a soul true i would never want to be responsible mm, for that that's yeah. very very powerful so how do you handle the pressure and expectations you know that comes mm. with this title I block I mute I'm not even going to lie to you mm-hmm. I I don't see half of it. Yeah. I have like muted and blocked. I don't Google search my name. Mm-hmm. I don't Sometimes I've trended not knowing that I'm trending and then mm. somebody from my team will be like you're trending and I'll be like handle it. Exactly. Like I I just do not have the energy that I used to have for it because I know what it did mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. It took me to a very very dark space. Yeah. So half the time unfortunately guys when things are happening on social media and they to do with me I don't see them. Mm-hmm. We've created so many filters and people don't even realize that's possible like on Twitter you can literally on X what is X now you can literally like filter out all these different words yeah. phrases mm-hmm. and that you don't want. I yeah. I sat down with an IT expert and did that for my own peace of mind. Yes. So most of the time like if I post and it's something that's like not okay yeah. I won't see it mm-hmm. because there's certain words that I've already blocked yes. out. Yes. Yes. Um but if it's you know something that's good then you know I, i haven't done any of that mm. so the the things that are getting filtered in are actually really really yes. good things i mean there was another day when i woke up and i was trending mm. I, i didn't even notice until like midday I like, <laughs> oh, i'm trending what did i do this exactly, time exactly you know exactly but it's protected my peace of mind and a mm. huge shout out to my team i think my team are so amazing yes. they do anything to protect me yeah um yeah. 
and I, I really appreciate the fact that I've got real people mm -hmm. around me. Yeah, a lot of people you. have that's to follow That's all away. you need. Yeah, that's yeah. all you need to just get the yeah. right people yeah. and good people. So, in conclusion, as we conclude this interview, Aww. this wonderful, awesome, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> interview, have you ever found yourself, I mean, in a situation where you felt like, okay, uh, you, you felt pressured to engage in a diss track or respond to controversy? Mm. And how did you handle it? Yeah, I kind of did. This is mm -hmm. a male hip-hop artist. But he's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was, he's not a big deal. <laughs> is it a diss the again? The hip-hop artist in me is coming out now. The real me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I've had to at times, you know, especially when when I, I'm getting hit at for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wasn't even part of it. Like, mm -hmm. what was said and I was mm -hmm. on your side. And then when it said, I just happened to be there. And then you decide to take shots at me. Yeah. And I've just realized that over the years, I... I became the soft person that everyone felt they could hit at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I've punch developed, back. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I've developed my own like mechanisms to be able to deal with that now. Yeah. So unfortunately at that point, I had to do that to prove to people that like, I have it in me. I just mm -hmm. don't do it, but mm -hmm. don't come for me because I don't bother anyone. So don't bother me. Yeah, perfect. And how do you think the perception, you know, of our controversies and diss tracks in hip hop yeah. has evolved over the over the years? And yeah. what impact, you know, does this one uh, does, does does this have on artists today? I think for one, if you're going to engage in anything of that type, you mm -hmm. have to have a very, you know, thick skin. But it definitely has translated into making more money, being yeah. more spoken about. Mm -hmm. And whether you like it or not, um, trust me, you, the ones you're hearing about all the time, good or bad, are the ones making the money. Mm -hmm. So with the diss tracks and everything else, I mean, we went through a very amazing and a historical time uh you know when when casper and aka may soul rest in peace yes. were up at each other yeah you have no idea how good that was for the culture mm. everyone wanted to engage him exactly. hip-hop yeah. aka put you know some of us on batters yes uh, you know you know casper and nadia and exactly. they're the family tree movement yes. and i think it was it was working well for everyone wow. you know mm -hmm. so Hip hop has got this way of being yeah, talked about. Like yes. we, we literally bring you mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So even though it seems like very hard and very real, I mean now with the whole Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Drake uh, situation, yes, I am telling you for free, they're making so much money out of that. Oh, they're wow, making a lot of money. Wow, of yeah. So don't get it twisted. Like, <laughs> exactly. It's just you block out the noise uh -huh. about you personally, yes, and you just get your money and you move. Awesome. So before you give us a, uh, you know, um. A, a freestyle. Uh, I, I know you flow. I, I, I know you flow. But before 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 you give us that freestyle, Gigi, uh, as a female artist in a male-dominated uh, you know uh, genre, yeah. Uh, what challenges have you faced in the industry? As a female, yeah. I mean, we've definitely been you know objectified, but I've chosen to take that and make it a good thing. Mm -hmm. So when you see me posting in a swimsuit, nobody's forced me to. Yeah. I've just um, realized that it's very powerful because uh, some of you men will be scrolling through and you literally sit there for like five seconds to yes. get the picture like Yes. <laughs> and I believe that's a superpower too. Exactly. You know, I believe yes. that's a superpower too. And, exactly. I, and I know there are women who feel completely different about that. Uh -huh. And I think that's the beauty about life. We all have different trajectories mm -hmm. and perspectives yes. when it comes to what your faith mm -hmm. is and what your faith becomes and what your faith looks like. And I think we're all living for different purposes. Very true. And uh, my purpose is that in the abyss of being, you know, objectified and mm -hmm. oh, they don't treat women as good as men. Yes. I have chosen to be a sacrifice for mm -hmm. young women yeah. coming up in the industry. And mm -hmm. I'm saying that no matter how we have to do it, we're going to get it. No matter how we need to get that, yes. we're going to get on top. We're going to do this. And it also. goes back to the Gigi Gang show. It mm. goes back to my music. Mm -hmm. It goes back to my pictures. It goes back to what I choose to engage in. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like there's a bigger purpose. Yeah. And that's that I want that little girl sitting there to say, I can do anything. I can choose mm. from all these different things mm. and I don't have to be a victim. Oh, that's very, very powerful. Gigi, thank you so much for, for being part of this podcast. Yes. I know maybe probably you might have uh, you know, a message or something that you want to say to our viewers, your yeah. viewers out there. This is a chance to say. Um. Mm. There is a God in you, and therefore you can do anything. Um, I believe in the power of, you know, as I had said earlier on, healing in private and coming out guns blazing. Mm -hmm. I believe the biggest honor you can serve to yourself is uh, working and let everybody catch on when the success comes. Mm -hmm. And never, 
ever share your plans mm-hmm. before they actually come through. Oh, wow. Powerful. A freestyle, Gigi. I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do something from a song uh, that's, yeah, coming through uh, with Basta and uh, Sizwe Alakain. Wow, we can't wait. Uh, it's called I Fall. Mm-hmm. Like he's dying, shang a paga, then we like, like we palamera minang hamba nabanga. Yam bona masinga na vilik tata de listrata, upe umonga melisu gumisa loki bad. No malumunigi naikat. Ufunu went ziniga niga nam, jelumuntu wakwaga gaga pigging am, no binda by yam straight foot on your chigging am. Wow. Just leave it there. <laughs> Translators, come through. Exactly. Translators. Please come translate for us. Yes, yes. And the song is called I4, Pastor 99, Gigi mm-hmm. Lemayne, Sizwe Alakain. On all music, uh, music all platforms. All music platforms. It's uh-huh. probably going to be one of the biggest. biggest yeah. I'm really excited about this one. Wow. Uh, King Munada, I said biggest. Right yes. now, Fufa is my biggest. Uh-huh. So you and I need to get back into the studio because after this one, it's mm-hmm. chai. Wow. Did you initially say, Waita Basa? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so you have to teach me one, at least one word in Sutu, Zulu, Zulu. Or yeah. Zulu, yeah. Uh, Zulu is Ndebele, mm, Siabonga. Yeah, Siabonga. Uh, but let's do Ndorivo. What does Ndorivo mean? Oh no! Okay, let's say Ndorivo. <laughs> yeah, Ndorivo. Yeah. I think it's thank you, Ndorivo. Oh, so, so, Ndorivo. Yeah. Kyalibuha. Let's do that one. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm learning, I'm learning, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gigi. That was Gigi Lemayne, all the way from South Africa. Zanzi for sure. So, yeah, guys, uh, we'll see you next time. And today, hey, let's call it a wrap. Bye-bye.